Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Let's talk a little bit more about torque. And let's talk about torque with the idea that things are going to rotate. So when we were talking about Newton's second law, what did we say? Newton's second describes linear motion. And we got this. The net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So if I apply a force to a mass, it will accelerate. Now, how do we deal with this in rotational motion? Well, in rotational motion, it's not a force that we're worried about. It is a torque, tau. It is not acceleration in the linear sense. It is acceleration in the angular sense. And then we have to put something in for mass. So what do we use for mass? We, in fact, use something called I, where I is the moment of inertia. So let's define everything here. This is the net torque. I is the moment of inertia. Alpha is, of course, the angular acceleration. So let's talk about this moment of inertia. What is I? I is defined as the summation of m sub i, r sub i squared. And this is the mass of the ith element. R is the distance from that element to the axis of rotation. And so when you calculate I for an object, you have to sum up all the objects and figure out how far they are from the axis of rotation. So let's try it for a simple example of a mass on a string. So if I have a mass on a string, and that mass is m, and it's out here at a radius r, and this thing is moving in a circle, okay, then this is the axis of rotation right there at the center. Okay, so what is I for this object? I is the sum of m sub i, r sub i squared. In this case, there's only one particle. It is particle m. What is the distance of that particle from the axis of rotation? It's r. So i for a single particle on a string is m r squared. But let's try it for a slightly more complicated object. Let's say we take a barbell And we have M1, and we have M1, and we're going to suspend it from a rope. We're going to spin it, okay? So the whole barbell is spinning around like this, and let's say that this distance is L over 2, and this distance is L over 2. How do I calculate the moment of inertia of this barbell? Well, it's the sum over i, m sub r times r sub i squared. So we have two particles. We have m1 at a distance, l over 2, and we have to square that. But we have another one of those, m1, and its distance from the axis of rotation is also l over 2. We're going to square that. And so in this case, we end up with 
2 m1 l squared over 4 which is m1 l squared over 2. Okay, so that's the moment of inertia for that barbell. Now, how does this relate to other objects? Let's say we want to calculate the uh, moment of inertia of a disk. Okay, here's our solid disk. And now let's spin it about an axis right through the center. Okay, so we put a string on this disk and we're going to spin it around like that. How do you calculate that moment of inertia? Well, the way you calculate it is you do an integral, okay? And you can do an integral by adding up every little mass in there times those positions squared, and you just do that throughout the whole disk. And it's actually not such a bad integral, integral to do. But let's just write down what the answer is for a solid disk. I for a solid disk is equal to one half m r squared. Okay, m is the total mass of the disk. R is the radius of the disk. Let's try a different object. Let's say we have a solid sphere. Okay. And we're going to rotate that solid sphere also about an axis through its north pole. And let's calculate I for the solid sphere. Now, you can do an integral again and figure it out. Or you can just wait for the answer, which I'm going to give to you. But let's think about it for a second. Should this solid sphere have a bigger moment of inertia or a smaller moment of inertia than the solid disk? Well, remember, the moment of inertia goes like m sub i r sub i squared. So if I put more mass away from the axis of rotation, it should have a bigger moment of inertia. So is there more mass farther away from the axis of rotation in the case of the solid disk or in the case of the solid sphere? I think you can convince yourself that the solid disk, in fact, has more mass farther away from the axis of rotation, because if I smush it up on the bottom and the top, I can make a sphere out of it. And in fact, a lot of that mass is close to the axis of rotation. And so what we find is that I for a solid sphere is in fact 2 fifths mr squared, where again m is the total mass and r is the radius of the sphere, just like the radius of the disk. Two-fifths is a little bit less than one-half, so our intuition was, in fact, correct. Okay, this is moment of inertia. Hopefully that's clear, and uh, we will see how it applies to uh, torque and dynamics problems next. Cheers.